changes. It was the inevitable result of the path humanity had chosen. Everyone who entered into the conflict expected victory. Everyone was optimistic. But as the hostilities escalated, optimism faded, and society began to collapse. The great vaults were built to house the wealthy, the powerful, the influential, and those deemed necessary to their survival. Inside, resources and technology were stockpiled, a final defense against the coming Holocaust. With the past behind them and the present destroyed, they looked to the future. The sturdy Vault Zero was to be the nucleus of the Vault Network, housing the greatest leaders, artists, and scientists. The inhabitants of Vault Zero were to reunite the vaults and lead the people to a new life, a new world. But after the bombs, the world would be a harsh one. To ensure the creation of a post-nuclear utopia, the vault dwellers would need help. Machinery was constructed to tame a land hardened by the ravages of war, then tempered by nuclear winter. But plans were barely in place when the first missiles left the silos. During the destruction, communication between the vaults ceased. Entire vaults were lost. Those that survived were on their own. Not all vaults succumbed to the machinations of war. On North America's west coast, one group of military vault dwellers emerged almost unscathed. They surveyed the wasteland and squared their shoulders for the task ahead. These dedicated survivors salvaged the technology from the vaults. Technology that was studied, replicated, and fiercely guarded. For they knew that while their power came from numbers, their future lay in scientific knowledge. In time, they formed the Brotherhood of Steel. The Brotherhood used their knowledge to drive back the atrocities of the wasteland, proclaiming themselves the technological saviors of mankind. They scoured the land in search of more technology, raiding mutant camps, bandit towns, and the broken remains of other vaults. But even they could not keep pace with the high tolls demanded by life in the wasteland. The Brotherhood found themselves at odds with their need for new blood versus their code of technological secrecy. The debate was lengthy. Finally, the elders ruled against sharing the technology with outsiders, convinced that they would endure as they had before. 
Further discussion was discouraged, and the elders ordered the minority on a mission across the wastes. Super mutants, the foot soldiers of a conquered army, had been forced into a retreat across the mountainous barrier to the east. The Brotherhood constructed airships and dispatched the minority to track down and assess the extent of the remaining super mutant threat. But disaster struck while crossing the Great Mountains. A great storm gripped the main airship and flung it far from its course. The mighty ship was badly damaged. The smaller sections were torn from the main craft, never to be seen again. Many of the expedition's leaders were lost to the winds. The fraction of the crew that still survived struggled to keep their ship aloft before finally crashing on the outskirts of a once thriving metropolis, a city once called Chicago. Broken, scattered, and scarred, they took stock of the situation and once again squared their shoulders to the task ahead. The Brotherhood had much to offer the surrounding villages. They traded advanced medicines in exchange for food and labor. They traded protection from bandits in exchange for new recruits. In time, their ranks began to swell. Separated by distance and ideology from the main Brotherhood forces, the minority was free to forge a new Brotherhood of Steel, one that reflected the ideals they had strived for all along. However, one's future in the wasteland is never certain, for an old power has awakened, also bent on making this land its own. Life in the Brotherhood is about to change. Ten, huh? All right, you mutated redneck, green skin, sacks of irradiated flesh, listen up! I am Paladin Rychek. I am in charge of training you backward maggots in the art of war and survival. In my time in the Brotherhood, I have personally trained more than 50 initiates, and I am proud to say almost 14 of them are still alive and kicking. The Elders have ordered me to mold you flabby, hip-slapping, berry-picking, rat-rubbing, Brahmin kissers into capable warriors. And I am going to do it, even if it kills you. I will teach you how to eat, sleep, walk, talk, shoot, spit like a Brotherhood soldier. First level of training will be recruitment detail. You'll go to the surrounding villages and see what able-bodied primates are ready for an honest life's work. It is your duty to remind the village elders that if they want continued protection from the scum of this world, they will uphold their end of the bargain by providing resources and their best and brightest for brotherhood training. Now get your weak-kneed, superstitious, soft-skinned, uneducated butts to the armory. You'll be issued basic weapons and armor. There are three simple rules to follow with brotherhood equipment. If you damage your weapon, you will spend a week in the box. If you damage your armor, you will spend a week in the box. If you lose either, I'll kill you myself. And one final thing, ladies. Huh? Welcome to the Brotherhood of Steel. Greetings to the Brotherhood of Steel. You are speaking with Charon, elder and tribal father to Brahmin Wood. You have arrived none too soon. Our village has fallen to raiders who rode out of the darkness. Some of my people escaped death or bondage by fleeing into the wasteland, but without tools and shelter. This must be the doing of the Brahmin God of Fate. With the bandits, we trade away our present in the Brotherhood, we trade away our future. With your initiation now over, the Brotherhood reveals to you their highest objective. Fragments of data left over from before the Great War showed that the ancients spent many years constructing vaults to house the survivors. Recently acquired data, however, points to the creation of an enormous super vault. This nucleus of the vault network was built to protect the greatest minds of the time and would be the spearhead of post-war civilization. If the Brotherhood could find this vault and activate its systems, they would have access to technology resources previously undreamed of, as well as access to the ancients themselves. But the journey to the calculated location of Vault Zero would be perilous. 
a large army and a vast area of operations would be required for a mission of this magnitude. They planned to follow the Roaring River to the south, forging alliances, gaining fresh recruits, and, if necessary, eliminating aggressors. Bunkers will be established in each new region to firmly establish a secure area of operations. When the Brotherhood's rule in the region is undisputed and their ranks are brimming with new recruits, the real campaign will begin, heading back towards the mountains. We are the animal spirits of this land. You will feed my pets, yes. Kill them, my beasts. Kill them so I can bathe in their blood. This is how I steal your power, steal your thoughts. Again, we are victorious, but we cannot rest on our laurels. The time has come again to shift our operations to the new bunker. Take your squad and rendezvous with us there. The Brotherhood's ranks have grown, and with their swollen numbers, they find themselves coming closer to the ultimate goal. The time to expand is now. Leaving an outpost behind, the warriors begin moving westward into a region known as the Belt. It is a scarred and desolate land, filled with death and the relics of a time before. Those who dwell here have scraped together a bleak existence, built on blood and grim determination. These isolated people are as hard as any in the wasteland. Pressuring these people to join the ranks of the Brotherhood will not be easy. Many will not understand the Brotherhood's glorious vision to reunite the people. Some resistance is expected. While the inhabitants are dangerous, the land itself has the power to stir up fearful memories in some of the generals and elders. They tell of the ill-fated flight across the mountains and how their mighty airships were torn apart. Old lore and surviving data suggests that at least one of the Great Brotherhood Zeppelins was lost in this very region. If it were located, there is a chance the equipment and supplies it contained could be salvaged and returned to the noble purpose for which they were intended. There may even be survivors, but few hold any real hope of this. Only time will tell. What fucking time some backup got here. Paladin Solo, commander of Talon Squad. It's not pretty here, brother. They're dropping bombs like it's the Great War. My troops are toast. I'm taking what's left of my unit and pulling out. Don't pull any punches with these muties. I watched one charge face first into some rough crossfire and laugh off the pain. Pull that APC up and tend to my soldiers. I can walk, but my squad needs medical attention. I'm not leaving until you get them on their feet. Hope you've still got a medic. Suffered another setback, brother. Most of our intelligence operatives were killed in the surprise ambush last night. I can scarcely believe it myself, but we now have to accept the possibility that the super mutants are familiar with our covert methods. What is left of our intelligence ops has discovered the location of one of the super mutant staging areas. You're doing the wasteland a favor by fighting us? We are the wasteland's last chance. The menace from the West doesn't know pity, or remorse, or fear, and it will not stop until everything is dead. Only super mutants can stop this threat, and we need this lab to solve our sterility problem, to build up our numbers. You fight on the side of ignorance. I fight for salvation. Huh? 
Who are you and why are you here? Oh dear, your brotherhood. Please, don't destroy my research. You realize what kind of resources and luck it took to make a functioning lab like this? We're so close to a cure, so close. What would the Brotherhood gain by destroying this research? Please, just leave me and my equipment alone. We can't stop now, do you understand? This is my people's last chance. If only the West Coast elders could see you, they would finally agree with us about sharing the Brotherhood's wealth of education and technology. But I digress. Do you believe you can stop the menace from the West? Your eyes give you away, brother. They tell me you don't even understand who or what the menace is. The elders have always been blind to what is not in front of them. But it ends here. The general is not here for you to save, I'm afraid, and you cannot save me or yourself. Now, show me what you've learned. I did not sacrifice my very identity to be beaten by those I strive to save. Ask yourself what you will gain by killing me. Judge me not by my actions, but by my goals. This undead enemy will not stop until all life has been extinguished. Why can't you see that? Why? The super mutants were a powerful adversary with great strength and courage. Without the leadership of Gamoran, though, they will never pose the same threat to the Brotherhood. It was the corruption of Gamoran that provided the most sobering lesson. Even the purest of hearts can falter. The elders and generals must push their sorrow aside, however, for they have more pressing matters to attend to. The data recovered from Gamoran's base indicates that the mutant force's route intersected with the calculated location of Vault Zero. It is possible that the mutant horde discovered the location of Vault Zero during their exodus from the West. Is there a connection between the mutants discovering Vault Zero and the emergence of the mechanical menace? Only time will tell. The future holds one thing for certain. More encounters with the robots are inevitable, and the Brotherhood as a new and deadly enemy. For weeks I toiled in our temple laboratory until I gave that vision physical form. And by Ohm's holy law, I will not rest until it reaches a place of sanctuary. Here is the key to the safe. The weapon is inside. Our prophecies told us our faith would be tested. But now the robots are taking prisoners instead of letting our fighters go to their rewards in the eternal assembly lines of Panasonica. For what purpose are they taking my brethren? This must be discovered. Let's stop wasting time. The final campaign begins, warrior. We must consolidate our positions in this area, but we shall also have to continue pushing west. A new bunker has been established, and we must concentrate our forces there. Take your squad and report ASAP. The Brotherhood's fears are confirmed. The robots now have multiple production factories around the wasteland. They are concentrated heavily around the Great Mountains, in a region known as Colorado Springs. This is the fabled location of Vault Zero, which houses the mastermind behind the robot menace, the Calculator. Data from the Brotherhood Research Center dates the origin of the robots before the war that decimated the land. Their purpose, to help humanity crawl back from the brink of self-destruction. But the robots now seek to destroy the very humans they were created to save. They boast great strength and power, and one factor seems certain. All life forms have become their prey. The Brotherhood has adapted to new enemies before, however. And with the development of new weapons, they will adapt again. Brotherhood tacticians and generals will not be idle, for new enemies require new tactics. Assault squads must be directed at the robot production and command centers that supply the calculator's metallic ranks. The Brotherhood's predicted losses are staggering, but what is life as a warrior without peril?
63 percent of vault zero's population is now dead while 15 percent of the living are now severely brain damaged and can no longer care for themselves my frustration builds with the fact that i can't even get into the calculator's chamber anymore due to lack of authorization if only first scientist napstarsky or second scientist jones had survived instead of me they might have been able to repair the electro-organic linking terminal in the paranoid times leading up to the war new vaults were being constructed every day the ancient temples of war known as norad became the home for vault zero a storage place for the cryogenically frozen geniuses of the time the calculator was built to be a mixture of machine and man a gestalt of mechanical switches and human brains linked through a cybernetic interface supposedly representing the ideal society these brains were to govern the higher functions of the calculator powering its neural network the calculator was designed to oversee the repopulation of the continent in the event of a war and educate the new humanity in the ways of the old world but first it was to sterilize the land making a fresh start for the soon to be emerging citizens of neo america for this task the calculator had at its disposal an army of emergency pacification robots that were designed to survive the holocaust and surface from the ashes immediately after to begin their task but a mechanical malfunction left the calculator damaged during the years since the bombs dropped mankind had to find its own ways in the darkness of the post-apocalypse only now is the calculator activating its robots and embarking on its mission of mass genocide because of hardwired programming it is unable to adapt to the world that has arisen while it slumbered. The calculator will not listen to pleas or threats. It cannot be bargained with. It must be stopped. heart the decision had been made long ago to forfeit one's life for the security of others what nobler end could there be sacrifices were always expected but to lose one's mortal shell and join with a machine is not an ending instead it is a new beginning revolving around the rebirth of humanity the first command to speed through the new calculators relays is the disabling of the active robotic forces averting the sterilization of all life on the continent. The warrior's mind had proven itself exceptional time and again in the field of battle. Now, working in conjunction with the calculator's sheer processing power, a union between the Brotherhood of Steel and the robotic forces quickly takes shape. The region sees new laws established to ease humanity back into civilized life, laws that are strictly enforced by the combined patrols of Brotherhood soldiers and pacification robots. To speed the unification process, discrimination against mutates is outlawed. Many prejudices are eliminated through education or the harsh implementation of Brotherhood justice. The willingness to overcome differences opens avenues of recruitment that would have otherwise remained unutilized. Mutated creatures that wish to live in peace under the new regime are welcomed though hesitantly, into the population. Old hatreds and fears are soon forgotten as the task at hand becomes apparent. Humans, ghouls, super mutants, and death claws all work together to begin transforming the wastelands into a post-nuclear utopia. The combined knowledge of the Brotherhood and Calculator's databases are a powerful tool for reshaping the world, and no time is wasted. Technology is slowly reintroduced into the land. Irrigation systems are established, bringing water to the barren soils for the first time in decades. New settlements spring up as land becomes fertile once again, with places of learning becoming the hubs of the fledgling civilization. 
A combination of old world science with new world wisdom paves the way to higher understanding and unity among the population. The new regime begins to expand across the wasteland, absorbing towns and villages, and quickly dispatching those that would halt progress. Soon, the Brotherhood is protector to a string of settlements. As the Brotherhood's power grows, so does its hold on the wasteland. But one question remains. What will happen when this young civilization encounters the original, knowledge-hoarding Brotherhood of Steel? The scribes and elders prepare for the meeting and hope to put differences in the past as the future of mankind hangs in the balance. But that is a battle for another day and perhaps another hero. Having weighed the options, the warrior purposefully strides into the calculator's brain-removing mechanism. While this union of mind and machine represents an end to the hero's mortal shell, it also promises rebirth with the power and resources essential to rescue civilization from the brink of oblivion. With the mind of the warrior working in conjunction with the ancient machine's sheer processing power, a new and potent calculator thunders into existence. Years of neglected faults and decay are repaired almost instantly, becoming the catalyst for dozens of defunct systems to flash back into full operation. The calculator becomes whole for the first time since its conception. Contact is immediately established with the Brotherhood Elders and an alliance is formed, but while no longer an opponent, the calculator chooses to not directly serve the Brotherhood. A delegation of the top Brotherhood Elders departs for Vault Zero to discuss details of the new alliance. They never reach their destination. Brotherhood soldiers and robots alike are dispatched to investigate. However, no traces of the ill-fated expedition were found. The impact on Brotherhood morale was devastating. For every soldier knows, leaders define rules, and rules shape the Brotherhood. The calculator quickly integrates with the surviving Brotherhood leaders. Protocol robots infused with knowledge of Brotherhood procedure begin to handle operations in Brotherhood outposts. Behemoth robots are sent to bunkers and allied towns to ease the strain of basic needs like patrols while maintaining a military show of force to keep outlaws at bay. Soon, the Alliance is discarded with all forces now under one computerized leader. The Brotherhood is, once again, reborn. To speed the unification process, discrimination against mutates is outlawed. The new Brotherhood views these creatures as a valuable resource instead of a threat to be eliminated. Old hatreds and fears are soon set aside as humans, ghouls, super mutants, and death claws work together to carry out the Brotherhood's plans for transforming the wastelands into a post-nuclear utopia. The new regime begins to expand across the wasteland, absorbing towns and villages, and quickly dispatching those that would halt progress. Soon, the Brotherhood is protector to a string of settlements with entire regions under its influence. As the calculator's power grows, so does its hold on the continent, but one question remains. What will happen when this new force encounters the original knowledge-hoarding Brotherhood of Steel? In the depths of Vault Zero, the calculator processes millions of possible scenarios in preparation for the inevitable meeting. It will not be as easy to eliminate the original West Coast Brotherhood elders but it must be done, for in the end, there can only be one leader. One that is willing to sacrifice anything or anyone to unify the wasteland. The general, driven by the memory of his wife and convinced by your words, boldly steps into the chamber. 
His brain is removed once again and placed into a specially constructed container. Now the sole organic influence on the calculator's supercomputer neural network, he finds himself united with an enemy he had sworn to destroy. His only objective is to restore order to the chaotic wastes and provide his beloved wife with the security he had promised so long ago. The new calculator dedicates its existence to the rescuing of pure blood humanity from the brink of destruction. Order is established with the Brotherhood soldiers and calculator robots enforcing new laws and spearheading the task of rebuilding and re-educating mankind. The first step is to comfort the battle-weary region. Combined groups of Brotherhood soldiers and robots are dispatched to patrol troubled areas. These forces are charged with the task of dealing the bandit lords a blow that will take them years to recover from. Technology is slowly reintroduced into the land. Irrigation systems are established, bringing water to the barren soils for the first time in decades. New settlements spring up as trade routes become safe from attacks. Once again, humanity begins to prosper. For the various mutates of the land, their destiny is somewhat darker. All known genetic divergence are immediately rounded up into internment camps and registered. Those that comply are forced to endure harsh conditions in labor gulags, where their unique abilities are exploited in tasks considered too dangerous or simply beneath pure blood humans. Humans who speak out against this new system are disciplined or silenced. Those mutants who choose to flee are ruthlessly hunted like animals. These unfortunates are captured, killed, and displayed across the region as a gruesome reminder to all impure life forms that disobedience from lesser creatures will be met with uncompromising punishment. Small factions of humans, defiant of the new Brotherhood dictatorship, join their outcast cousins to form the Mutant Liberation Army. Any creatures suspected of supporting this outlawed faction are quickly rounded up and interrogated by the general's hand-picked inquisitors. Many are never seen again. But for every disappearance, for every public execution by the new regime, another rebel joins the outlaw movement. Soon, the Brotherhood finds itself under repeated attack. The Mutant Liberation Army attempts to utilize guerrilla tactics to offset the overwhelming combined force of robot and Brotherhood soldiers. The rebels fight for many reasons now. Revenge, freedom, and a chance for a better life. Some join the battle because waging war is all they know. It is a struggle they are destined to lose. For humanity, however, progress is made. It comes slowly at first, for time is an ingredient as important as order and determination when great changes are to be made. Soon, without the required resources and firepower, the Mutant Liberation Army is driven west, back to an area where many of them met bitter defeat not long ago. Their actions becoming more and more desperate when they realize they are being driven back into a region controlled by the Old Brotherhood. Humanity rules the land again, while the mutates have nothing but death. It lies waiting over every hill, behind every rock, through every crosshair. They are without justice. They are without hope. Such is life in the wasteland. When the acrid smoke clears, nothing remains of the entity known as the Calculator, except burnt wires and broken valves. It is a decisive victory for humanity, for at the crucial point in the raging battle, the robots were stopped dead in their course of destruction. The warrior can only ponder on the lost opportunity that the destruction of such a technological marvel represents. History has shown that even the victors of battle have some regrets, but sometimes one must move forward. The Brotherhood is quick to establish Vault Zero as its main base of operations. Although much destruction was wrought here, 
it still represents a massive storehouse of knowledge and technology. The ancient structure becomes the central hub of operations, coordinating between outposts far and near, and reinforcing their supply lines and transport routes across the countryside, ironically mimicking the original purpose of their defeated enemy. Recruitment and education of the local tribal and village populations becomes the all-important mission of the depleted and wounded brotherhood. But the education is not one-sided. After generations of surviving in the harshness of the wastelands, the indigenous people are in tune with the land. They have valuable lessons to teach those immersed solely in technology, lessons of nature and balance that the Brotherhood had previously neglected. Not all of the Wasteland's inhabitants are sharing the same noble purpose. Opportunistic raiders and bandits enjoy the fruits of a recovering war-torn Brotherhood. Patrols are scarce and in smaller numbers than the thieves remember encountering in the past as the Brotherhood focuses on consolidating its power base. Several frontier outposts are lost as the Brotherhood finds they are fighting a guerrilla war without the support of large numbers. But adversity and hardship are as familiar to the Brotherhood as discipline and knowledge, and they learn their lessons quickly. With a new power over this region comes a new responsibility. All plans for re-establishing contact with the West are postponed indefinitely. Recruitment begins anew, and the initiate ranks swell. All military efforts are then concentrated on uprooting all outlaw predators in the region, finally making it safe for the Brotherhood and its allies. In time, the Brotherhood once again rules the land. Resources are then allocated to expansion and development. Technology becomes more widespread, with irrigation systems established to make the nuclear-blasted land fertile. Humanity once again starts to prosper. The hero, the warrior of the Brotherhood, now a general, shares the burden and the satisfaction of overseeing civilization's development. The Brotherhood of Steel has come through the trials of this region and emerged scarred but wiser. It will be decades before a reunion is possible between the old Brotherhood and the new Brotherhood regime. In that time, there are new alliances to be made, new battles to be fought, new victories to be had. But that is a tale for another day. Thank <laughs> you.